Raise your hands if you're a full stack web developer. Well, you guys are an endangered species. Where can we find developers who can navigate the React Webpack ecosystem, understand millions of ExpressJS middlewares, navigate through the soup of cloud technology, and build a multi-region, multi-cloud Kubernetes cluster? The modern web landscape is devilishly complicated. In the early 2000s, you could have imagined a child sitting with his grandma, figuring out how to do web development. But now, the learning curve now is really treacherous. And that is why I love the Jamstack. With the Jamstack, we can focus on the fun of web development and forget about the difficult pieces like the servers and the deployments and move them to edge cases, which we don't have to worry about on our day-to-day -day life. In my talk today, I'll introduce myself and my experiments with static websites. I'll discuss when we should or should we ever use the Jamstack for e-commerce, how we can use it for e-commerce, and when will the Jamstack not jam your stack? <laughs> Time for some introductions. My name is Atishe. I'm a senior computer scientist at Adobe. In the last 10 years, hopefully I've done something to impact your, all of the lives of people on this planet. On the side, I work on a VS Code extension, my own personal website, which is Jamstack-based and hosted on Netlify, and I'm in the process of writing a book on Hugo, Hugo in Action, which is an early access. This is me on the right trying to build my first website. I started with plain old HTML4 using frames. Very quickly, I realized that this is very difficult to manage, and I needed the complexities and the simplicities of PHP. Very soon, I realized that with great power comes the responsibility that I was not able to handle. Therefore, I had to give it up and move on to a hosted solution. After a while, I found the Jamstack. With Jekyll, I was able to post my website and have the flexibility back with little maintenance. Over time, I moved to Hugo. With Hugo, I found the best solution with a great performance, a lot of flexibility, and low maintenance. I liked it so much that I'm actually writing a book on Hugo. Coming back to the original question, should you use the Jamstack for e-commerce? When I started with my book, a friend of mine said, Hugo, the Jamstack, it is a dead-end technology. You cannot do anything serious with this technology. And I took him very seriously. I decided to add a chapter in my book to build a serious, quote unquote, serious application with the Jamstack. Looking for a solution, I realized that e-commerce fits the bill perfectly. In an e-commerce application, we have millions of product pages. Those pages don't change very frequently, and all the users visit them multiple times before actually purchasing. These pages are public, which means they have been accessed by bots and search engines. And every change that you make is hit multiple times. If you have a mobile app for all the dynamic content in these pages, we would already have APIs. If you follow service-oriented architecture, you would have already set up an inventory management system, a logistics system, and a billing system, which would be independent of your core website. And that's all that's needed to set it up on the Jamstack. Using the Jamstack, what we can do is use the markup layer for creating the product pages. These pages are static. They can be created in a markup language, hosted on a CDN, and we don't have to worry about them. Then we can use the API layers to do the inventory management, the billing, and the logistics layers. And finally, use JavaScript. Use JavaScript to communicate with these independent systems. We could also use JavaScript to set up the shopping cart. Now, I have an example where I'm trying to use JavaScript to, to, to do all this, a plain Jamstack example. And I'm trying to use the PayPal and the Square APIs. And these APIs from PayPal are what I call PayPills. PayPal has these add to cart buttons with which you can add stuff to your shopping cart. 
if you don't have an API management system, if you don't have an API system for inventory management and logistics, billing providers take care of that. I call them pay pills because these buttons look like pills. You can go to paypal.com slash buttons to create your own e-commerce buttons or edit card buttons. In these buttons, you can provide all the information about your purchase, your inventory, your user redirection, and PayPal would give you a code, a button code that you can use in your website. I have this website for veggie foods where I sell organic fruits and vegetables at exorbitant prices. <laughs> I've built this in Hugo, and what that means is I have a folder for each of my products. Each folder contains an image and a document. The document has a markdown piece, which is a description of the product, some metadata, like the pricing information, and a PayPal ID that I can use on PayPal. With this information, I can build the product page. Yeah. With this information, I can build the product page. <laughs> well, imagine you can see the product page. This product page does not have a PayPal pill. Well, you got the other things else. So you can build a product page with these information, and when you click on Add to Cart, it would go to PayPal, which can take care of all your cart management and checkout. Once it's done, PayPal would update the system and send you an email that something happened. And in this way, you never had to write any server-side code to get an e-commerce system ready. You could do a lot more with the cloud function. PayPal provides an order API. Similarly, Square provides a get payment API. If you want to build your own shopping cart, you could do all of that in JS. And then with your shopping cart, when everything is done, forward that information to a cloud function. This cloud function would call these APIs, so redirect the user to the billing server. The user would purchase the product, and the cloud function would get a callback wherein you could forward that information to your inventory system, or in case of a digital service, directly do a download. This way, you won't have to jam your stack. Everything is scalable. Your product pages are hosted on a CDN. They can take a lot of hits. Your billing system is actually something like PayPal or Square, which can handle a lot more load than something that I would build manually. And if you really want to use your own custom shopping cart, you can host it on a cloud function where the service provider takes care of scaling it. The Jamstack is perfect for e-commerce. It's perfect for e-commerce where your product selection doesn't change every minute. If you're trying to build an Amazon or an eBay where you have millions of products which are being created every minute, maybe you won't use this. But if you are a certain fruit company that releases products every year with millions of users, Jamstack might be right for you. In case you are Amazon and eBay, you could still build a hybrid solution where pages like About Us and Privacy Policy could be built using a static system, and the dynamic pieces could remain dynamic. And especially for the Jamstack conference, I have a 40% discount code, not just for Hugo in Action, but for all books on Manning.com. CTW JamSF19, this would be our time to take a picture. Thank you.